All right, YouTube, what is going on? So today I kind of want to talk about some of the Sitka whitetail gear that I take into the field for the mid into late season, as well as my archery setup and some of the optics that I take into the field. Big disclaimer is I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. So this is free advertising and it's just some of the stuff that I saw worked for me, given some of the elements that you face in the Midwest with the snow, the rain, the wind. And uh, this is by no means a video that is promoting a certain brand or saying that you should buy this stuff, uh, but it's just recommendations and stuff that I've used in the field to uh, harvest some of these nice bucks out here. All right, so before I hop into my Sitka mid-season whitetail setup, I'll go into my archery setup that I utilized last year. Uh, it kind of overlaps for what I'm running this year, but this is the VXR 28. It's one of my favorite bows that Matthews has ever released. I'm running a Spot Hog Fast Eddie XL triple stack sight on it. I'm running an Ultra Rest MX Integrate drop away rest, B Stinger stabilizers front and back. 10 inch in the front, eight inch in the rear. My arrow setup, I'm running uh, Gold Tip Velocity Pros 340s. Um, I love how these arrows fly, they're super durable. I've shot a few deer and um, they've held up really nice. For fletchings, I'm running Tacvane 2.75 drivers with a three degree offset helical. And then for broadheads, last year I started shooting the Slick Trick 100 grain Viper Tricks. Super, super sharp. Um, my Kansas buck last year, they passed right through and this bow just held up really great. And yeah, I just love this bow. This year I'm shooting the, the phase four. I'm gonna shoot this bow as well, but um, some of my East Coast hunts, I'm gonna be shooting the phase four that I already have set up. And I'm running a very, very similar setup other than the sight and my fletchings. I'm going to a four fletch this year, but so that's the archery setup. I'll put the specs in the description, um, but overall an amazing bow, a bow that I'll probably keep for a really long time. Going into a little bit of the optics, I did forget to mention I am shooting a Carter First Choice release for the bow. One of my favorite releases of all times. Again, Carter is not paying me to say that. This is a product that is super durable in the field. I love shooting hand releases and uh, I don't think I'll go back to anything else. Diving into the optics. So this harness here is the fish hunt fight um, setup. Personally, I'm not a fan of it. Um, I'm running Vortex 10x42 UHDs. Um, amazing optics, perfect for whitetail hunting, especially in the Midwest. I have the Rangefinder 2.0 pouch attached to it with the Razer HD 4000 um, Vortex as well. I love that Rangefinder. Again, perfect for this type of hunting that we do in the Midwest. Overall, it's like a decent harness, but I switched over to Marsupial. I love their uh, their harnesses. I love the flip open forward pouch that they have on that. Just easy access and that's what it's about when you're uh, whitetail hunting. I think this setup is great and this rig is really good for hunting out west when you don't always have to consistently be on the ready to pull your binos out. Um, but again, Vortex, great optics. It's what I've always ran. Um, on my rifle, I run a Leopold, but hey, that's personal preference. I love that rifle scope. Uh, but for my binos and range finders, Vortex all the way. All right, so now I'm going to dive into what I run for my Sitka, you know, mid layers, kind of the mid season going into the late season setup. And I wanted to start with this piece of clothing here. So I can drop the screenshot or description of it uh, in the comments or in this video in general, but this is going to be your whitetail fanatic hoodie. This is hands down probably one of the nicest hoodies I've worn in the field when it comes to comfort, being able to, you know, sit in those days where it's in the you know, 45 to 60 degree range, right? Because sometimes in the Midwest and in other states too, um, the weather can change in an instant by the time you get to those late morning sits. I love the Fanatic hoodie. I usually run this with some type of like Merino base layer. Sitka also has the, uh, the 150 series Merino that they just came out with, which would be great to put under this. Sometimes I just put a, a moisture wicking t-shirt under this and wear it as is. But I'll also dive into how I pair this going into those colder days where it does drop down into the 30s. And I've even worn this um, down into the 20s as well and been comfortable the entire time. So Fanatic hoodie, one of the nicest hoodies, super comfortable, definitely recommend it. So for bottoms, 
What I found was the most comfortable given those mid-season temperatures, like I said, that 40 to 55 degree range, 35 to 55 degree range, the mid-weight bottoms. Um, they're not as thick as the heavyweight bottoms or the 350 series Merino um, that they're running now, but the mid-weight bottoms, I feel like work perfect with any layering system for those mid-season sits. Contrary to this, I add these with these, which I hope Sitka never gets rid of. This is hands down one of the nicest mid layers that you can wear from temperatures down into the teens, which I've worn it in, all the way up to you know those 50 degree temperatures in the mid season. These are the midi pants that Sitka makes. As you can see, the inside lining is this super, super warm wool. They cuff at the bottom, which is also very, very nice. There's some other companies out there like First Light is, I think they have the Origin pants that you know they're trying to compare to these mid layers that Sitka already has. Uh, and they're awesome, completely awesome. I wear these almost every day during those colder days. Um, and I'll get into how you can wear the mid weight bottoms with the middies along with the Stratus setup, which we'll get into now. All right, so I went into some of those temperatures where the days are in the 40s to 50s. Um, now, when the temps drop a little bit, you get into those mid-November temperatures, regardless if you're in the Midwest or out East. Um, the temps, you know, sometimes in the morning get down into the 30s. This is what I wear. So I go with the heavyweight top. Again, this is a big game item, which you'll see on their site. It's a big game item, but again, I like this for whitetail because it's just a little bit thicker, it's grid fleece, and it traps in your heat. So usually I'll put this on with some type of merino layer underneath. And then this may be up for argument, but again, another big game item, not necessarily a whitetail item, but it's something that I wear when, when those temperatures start to drop, and that is the Kelvin Aerolite jacket. So this jacket traps in heat, you pair this with the heavyweight uh, mid layer, um, and then you get into your outer garments. And so for me, hands down, the best outer garment that Sitka makes is the Stratus setup. I don't wear the bibs, I have the pants and the jacket, but I'll get into it right here. I don't have the hood attached right now, but you can see the material that it's made out of here. It's very soft. And one thing I forgot to mention was that all of Sitka stuff runs true to size. I don't think anything runs too big or too small. I'm 5'8", 150 pounds, and I essentially wear medium and everything, if that gives you some type of a baseline. But again, this isn't very, very thick, but with that windstopper fabric, it really traps in your heat. When you run this with the heavyweight top and you run it with the Kelvin Aero Light jacket, you put this over top and you can literally sit all day in the teens, even you know wind chills into the negatives. Here's the pants. Again, same fabric. They fit true to size. I wear lacrosse uh, Alpha Burley Pros for my boots and they fit, they fit perfect over them. You can run them inside as well, depending on if you're walking through water or snow. And um, the Stratus also sheds snow and rain, light rain very well. I would look more into their downpour series if, you know, if it's gonna be raining and you're looking into uh, doing some sits in the rain. The Stratus, not the greatest for the rain, but keeping warmth in the stand, this is hands down the best product. Okay, so two of the last pieces of Sitka garments that I wanna kind of highlight are gonna be the, the Whitetail Fanatic suit. This suit has allowed me to stay in the stand longer than I ever used to. I used to get really cold very quick. I'm a skinny guy, so it makes sense. Um, if you layer this properly, you can have a very, very, very long sit in some very frigid temperatures. I've worn this down into the negatives on several sits for hours, and I love it. It's very quiet. Sitka also has the Fanatic backpack, which I utilize on occasion. Um, I use the toolbox, which I'll show you that in a second, but you can see that this material here, when it comes to these really long sits and really cold temps, very, very quiet material. All the snaps are quiet. It's very thick material with the thermo insulate and wind stopper built into the fabric. It has zips all the way through the leg, all the way up. So you can actually 
put you know any boots on. You can take these bibs on and off really, really easily. So for right-handed shooters, they do make a lefty version as well, but I like how they do this cross zip in the front. So you're just more mobile. Like I said, um, this system is, gets very, very hot, very, very quick. So it's not good for like walking into a stand. If you're ripping in e-bikes or on a side-by-side, -side, it's probably fine, but you don't wanna have long walks because this gets really, really hot. You don't wanna pass out. I'm serious. If you're in the negatives and you wear this with too many layers, it gets that hot. Um, it's similar to the incinerator series that they make. It's just the material traps in your heat and keeps you as warm as possible because that's what it's designed for. Um, being warm and being quiet are two of probably the most important things when hunting in the late season um, and some of those days that it drops down and the wind starts to pick up and um, you know when you're hunting these big bucks you really want to be able to sit on those long days during the rut and you know not have to get down and head back to the truck this system also has snaps in the back um, i don't have a hood for it but i think the female version does have a hood accessible but this does allow you to put a harness through it because at the end of the day, you're probably gonna have your harness on under this. You pair this with, again, I would usually wear the midi bottoms with some type of light base layer under those. I'd put the bibs on and then I would wear the heavyweight top with some layer like the Celsius um, or even the Fanatic hoodie and just put this over top and you will be warm for your entire sit, hands down. All right, so last piece I wanna mention, um, for gear wise is the tool bucket backpack. I think this came out about two or three years ago. Um, it's not as quiet as the Fanatic backpack because of the material, um, but this is the only backpack that I ran last year and the year prior. It has a lot of compartments to add whatever, your calls, your snacks, your releases, etc. cetera. Um, it's very, very deep. So you can see, you can fit a lot of stuff down in there it has these extra pouches. You can unzip these for extra storage. It has a net in there where you can separate your gear um, on each side, whether you have straps, um, calls, you know, I have my, my light, extra pull-up ropes, et cetera. Um, oh, Fanatic gloves, also a great product for the mid-season. They have finger holes, so you can still text and swipe on Instagram if you want. Um, but the tool bucket, great item to have. The padding on the back is awesome. It's very durable. Um, it's just overall a pack that I would recommend if you're gonna run this system. You can fit a lot of stuff in it. If you do have to walk in far, you can fit your outer garments in there pretty easily and access them once you have your pack actually hung. So I know that was kind of quick, but that is the basic essentials that I use for my Sitka gear setup. I'm gonna try a couple new garments this year and just try and find that system that works best for me. This is what I have found to work best so far. Again, given those mid-season temperatures where they're always changing, you never know if rain or wind or snow are gonna happen, the seasons are changing, and you're operating in those temperatures that are you know, 40s to 50s, sometimes down into the lower 30s, and you need to layer properly. So I'll link these in the description, what the items are. Like I said, they all run true to size. And again, this is just Sika gear specific. Disclaimer, like I said before, none of this stuff I'm being paid to say, this is all free advertising and this is just something that you can invest, put the money towards having success in the field because that's what it's about. Having fun, being able to sit, you know, sit out there longer and enjoy the great outdoors at the end of the day. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.